<laughs> so this is one of my favorite trees. This is Eastern White Pine, Pinus strobus, and the reason I love it so much is it's a, a multi-use tree. It does so many different things. Uh, it's easy to identify. It uh, is the only tree with uh, five needles per fascicle in the uh, uh, eastern United States, maybe all of North America. Uh, it is great for fire. Uh, as you can see, it retains its dead twigs and they're quite fine. They're, uh, they're resinous um, and their bark is thin, so they dry out quickly. Not to mention, again, they're retained on the branch when they're dead. But this makes an excellent, excellent kindling. And uh, the branching sometimes is considerably finer than, than this. Uh, here's an example of a dead branch that's just full of uh, kindling ready to go. So kindling, again, by definition, will take a match. And this is a great tree for fire in wet weather. It's also the easy... Uh, pine in terms of uh, friction fire. So this does the bow drill quite well and as an example easily it's not a big species but it uh, retains its branches so you've got a dry piece of material um, ready to go for the bow drill. This is also an excellent um, tree for food and medicine. So obviously pine needle tea this is the uh, one that I prefer in terms of, of taste, you know, chock full of vitamin C. It's also an excellent uh, food source, emergency food source or trail snack, uh, the inner bark. And it is full of fats, carbohydrates, um, vitamins. Uh, I swear there's vitamin B in there because it gives you, I get a little shot of energy when I, when I eat some of the inner bark. Uh, and then it's also a medicine. Um, you can make a tea from the inner bark and it will work as an expectorant. So you got a chest congestion, nasal congestion, um, works great for that. So how do you how do you get the inner bark out to eat or to use for medicine? So let's do that real quick. Now ideally when you do this you're going to want to um, do it in a place where the tree will uh, get sun and the reason for that is you don't want to have it um, be exposed to the opportunity to get a pathogen a fungus etc so you want it to get uh, ex sun exposure the other thing to keep in mind when you do this is that uh, if you when you take a piece of the inner bark out you're going to be killing the branch from there on out so we want to do this reverent reverently and uh, knowing that we're going to damage the tree so uh, as I'm going to harvest this this would be the same whether you're going to do it for uh, an edible, which by the way, you don't want to eat a ton of this raw or it will uh, obviously impact your, your stomach. It's pretty fibrous. Um, and so you can cook it, you know, boil it, fry it, bake it, uh, etc. There, there are those things you can do. Um, in terms of doing this for a uh, um, tea, uh, a typical dose for most inner bark is a, the size of your pinky uh, dried out. If you are going to do it green, so if we were going to make a tea out of this right now, I would take twice the size of my pinky. So what you do is you make an incision in the form of a rectangle. And I'm trying to do this around the camera so you guys can see it. And then what I like to do is actually shave the outer bark off first to get to the inner bark. And then once you do that, the inner bark is between there and the, the sapwood, and it's just a matter of 
getting underneath that and peeling it off. A little bit of wood there. So I'll just have to take that off after. So you see I missed that little piece of inner bark right there. So if you can see that there's my inner bark. I'm gonna let that dry out and that will be a a dose for me as an expectorant. And I need it right now. Got a little sinuses kicking. At any rate, this is again eastern white pine, pinus strobus. Great tree. Great tree.